Right now, I'm challenging myself to see if I can make 128 Regulation H teams that are each different from one another over the course of 128 days. Why 128, you might ask? At the end of the 128 days, we're gonna do something special where we battle every team against each other in a single elimination bracket to see which team emerges on top. There will be some competitively strong teams, there will be some gimmick teams, and there will be some probably a good number of goofs and gaffs in there, so if you want to follow through to the end, subscribe so that you can keep up with each day. But without further ado, let's move on to day 35. Alright everybody, welcome back to another video, and in today's video we are going to be going over a team that I call the Slow Army Team, because after I finished building this team, I realized that Mischievous and Mian Xiao both start with me, and then Araquanid and Arbelieve will both start with R, and Fergaraf has R as the if you don't include the F, and then Slowbro is just kind of here. So this is the Slow Army Team, and that's what we're gonna call it, because I don't- I mean, I guess I could call it like Mischievous Trick Room Team. So let's get into the team. First off, we have a Mischievous, who I think Mischievous is a Pokemon that not a lot of people are prepared for in the closed team sheet format, because uh, everybody is used to fighting against ghosts that really aren't that tanky, like there is Dustclops, but you really don't see Dustclop too often when it comes to Trick Room Setters, as there's a bunch of other better Trick Room Setters, and the other ghosts that you're fighting are like Gengar, Golden Go, which are both pretty squishy. But with Mischievous and the Eviolite, we actually have a pretty decent amount of bulk on Mischievous, as we'll see in the upcoming games. And on our Mischievous set, we're going to be setting up Trick Rooms so that we can support our slower Pokemon so that they can move before other faster Pokemon. You know how Trick Room works. And then to follow up on Mischievous, we also have the Pain Split. Since Mischievous doesn't have a lot of HP investment, it means that we can lower the HP of most other Pokemon, especially once we've ideally taken two attacks and we have the Trick Room up, we can Pain Split opposing Pokemon and pretty much get all of our health back, as well as we have the Taunt for disrupting Pokemon that want to go for status move, and we have Will-O-Wisp for disrupting physical attackers. And with our only ability being Levitate, we're going to be off the ground, so we're not going to be affected by terrains or anything like that, but we won't be getting hit by ground moves, which is a nice trade-off because we can be running the Terra Fire, which allows us to resist not a lot of types that Mischievous was weak to, but just general good resistances for Mischievous. Following up Mischievous, we got Mian Xiao here, and Mian Xiao is really nice because it has the inner focus ability, which means that not only won't be getting intimidated, but you also won't be getting flinched, so you're a pretty hard check into Incineroar, and with our good stab fighting type damage in our close combat, we can do a lot of damage, but we're also eject pack, which means that whenever we have a stat drop, we can swap out Mian Xiao. And since we're inner focus, our eject pack isn't going to be getting activated by opponents' intimidates or anything like that and we can activate it ourselves with our close combat. So once we've done all that massive damage with close combat, we don't have the drawback of actually taking increased damage from our defenses being dropped. As well as we just have knockout and U-turn for just good tools all around, and we have the fake out because fake out's always nice and doubles, and we're stellar Terra just because I really value that one hit of the boosted close combat and then swapping out in some scenarios, and also the stellar Terra boost on knockoff can get you some nice KOs into psychic types that aren't expecting to get KO'd for the turn. Next up, we got Araquanid, and Araquanid is a super nice Trick Room Pokemon because it is super slow, but it also hits like an absolute truck because of its ability Water Bubble, which is basically huge power for water type moves, but it also decreases the power of fire type moves into you, and you can't be burned. So, Water Bubble is a really nice ability on Araquanid, and with the Clear Amulet, we won't be getting our attack drop or speed drop or defenses dropped or anything like that on the stat boost side. And with our Terra Water to increase our water type damage, our liquidation is going to be absolutely just destroying anything that's even neutral to the liquidation, which is handy. But we also have the Leech Life, just in case we need to deal bug type damage, or there's a Pokemon that's stopping us from using water type damage, like Gastrodon in the field. As well as we just have good defensive tools in the Wide Guard and the Protect in order to make sure that a Rockwinade can avoid certain scenarios where it would get knocked out. Up next, we have another one of our Trick Room setters, Ferrigoraph, but this Ferrigoraph is a pretty offensive Ferrigoraph in the fact that we are running 
Throat Spray in combination with our Stab Hyper Voice, we can do a lot of damage with Ferrigraph, but we also have the Psychic Noise, which will make it so that the opponent cannot heal, which is nice because uh, we do have Arbolivo with such a grassy terrain, but if we can Psychic Noise the opponent and they won't get healing from grassy terrain, or leftovers, or side Pollen Puff, or any of that kind of stuff. And Psychic Noise is also a sound-based move, so it will also activate our Throat Spray. It's just that if we come up against a sound-based Pokemon, or a soundproof Pokemon, then Ferrigraph won't be be able to hurt them, but that's why we have Helping Hand, so hopefully one of Furograph's allies can hurt the soundproof Pokemon. And of course, on since we're running Furograph, we're going to be running Armor Tail so that we can negate all forms of priority, and we're Terra Grass just so we're not getting put to sleep by Amoongus. Speaking of grass types though, we have Arbolivia hitting the field, who is a pretty nice Trick Room Pokemon, who it does kind of get bullied out by other useful grass types in the format, but Arbolivia is still able to hold its own here, as we are going to be running the Assault Vest on Arbolivia in order to boost its special defense, and we're mostly just running coverage moves and the Giga Drain, which, which gives us a lot of survivability, especially when we're clicking it into mons that are super weak to it, as well as the Hyper Voice again, it's just good stab damage, and we have the Alluring Voice in case we want to punish Pokemon. Pokemon that are trying to set up in front of our Arbolivo, we can give them a Confusion, and the Earth Power is just some nice type coverage and the things like fire types that want to hurt our Arbolivo. And Arbolivo does not directly set up the grassy terrain upon entering like Rillaboom does, however it does have the benefit of being able to set up the grassy terrain whenever it is hit. So as long as Arbolivo is taking a kind of weak special attack, it means that we're going to be setting up our grassy terrain. Which can be pretty beneficial since our Believa is pretty slow. Uh, if something hits us first and then they set up grassy terrain for us and we go for the Giga Drain and we're going to get boosted Giga Drain damage. And lastly, we got Slowbro, who I just kind of slotted in here just because I think Slowbro is fun with the quick draw ability, which gives you a 30% chance to move first in the priority bracket, which is a pretty high chance. It, it does activate pretty often whenever you got Slowbro on the field. Uh, and Slowbro is meant to set up on the special side as we have the shell side arm, which it can be physical, but we're going to be using the special side more often than not. As well as we just have Flamethrower for tight coverage, and we have Calm Mind for boosting ourselves, and hopefully Hopefully Slowbro won't get knocked out so we can do a lot of good special attack damage under Trick Room and Protect is mostly just here to save ourselves and Safety Goggles is that so we're not getting put to sleep by Amoongus but we can also ignore Redirection Rage Powders. So yeah, that's the basic gist of the team. Let's get into some battles. This first battle is against a sand team here, and they also have some fairly offensive components in the Golden Go and the Dragonite, and the Hisuian Decidueye can also just triple arrows into Mistrivis because it is probably scrappy. So, so we start Minshaw and Mistrivis here, and they decide to start Dragonite and Goldango for whatever reason, and get the knockoff into Goldango, which is pretty nice, as they Shadow Ball into Mistrivis, and they do get the crit here, which... Uh, kind of ends up mattering, but I just decided to Willowbus into Dragonite since I really thought that it was going to try and do something a little bit more crazy, but it just went for the Thunder Wave into Mian Shao. And they end up Shadow Ball uselessly into Ferrigraph here as Dragonite actually reveals that it's Substitute, which is. Alright, I don't know what this Dragonite's cooking, but. Uh, Goldengo is going for a nasty plot here, and Dragonite is just trying to Thunder Wave everything on the field, but we get to take out Goldengo with a close combat here, and that means that Mian Shao is going to be swapped out for Mistrevis, as Furgraph now gets up the Trick Room, which is pretty nice, and Tyranitar is going to hit the field. So I just click Hyper Voice, and since it's a sound-based move, it goes through Dragonite Substitute, which is pretty good. Uh, as they Thunder Wave into Mischievous, but I think this guaranteed makes Mischievous slower than Tyranitar, so we get to Pain Split it, and then they crunch into Mischievous, and they do get a defense drop here, which is a little annoying, but, I mean, Mischievous on so low health, like, it's... Not incredibly likely to live turn, as now we get a boosted Hyper Voice, so Furgaref gets to KO Dragonite, and they crit the Crunch here with Tyranitar as we take a pair turn with Mischievous, I believe we saw there. So, not a great turn, but we still have two turns of Trick Room left, and they only have two Pokemon left, so even though Mischievous is going to get paralyzed again, they decide to Drill Run into a bug, which is not very advised, but... I mean, our water type is slower than Excadrill, and even if next turn they decide to protect with Excadrill, uh, we just have Mayan Shao, so as long as Mayan Shao gets to close combat into Excadrill, we still win there. Coming up next, we have Pelipper Rain, but they also have the Annihilate, which can be pretty destructive, and their Clefairy, so I wasn't quite sure if they were, like, Choice Scarf Annihilate or Bulky Rage Fist Annihilate, there's just a lot of variability here. Well, we let this one play out, we decide to lead Mianxiao and Mistrevis again as the opponent leads Annihilate Clefairy, 
I figure there's really not much they can do to Mistrivis unless they're like Shadow Claw, and they reveal that they are Rage Fist, and Rage Fist does about half of our health, but we get up our Trick Room, which is super nice, as they're going to Rage Fist again into Mistrivis, and that's going to pick up the KO this time. We're going to close combat into Clefairy, which brings it down to about half since we took off its AVL Light, and that allows us to free swap into a Raquanid and a Farigraph here. As they bring in the Incineroar, but we're clear amulet on a Raquanid, so Incineroar is not going to get to do much. As I try to take out Clefairy, but Clefairy just take a protect turn and we slick noised into Incineroar but it's immune to that obviously and they for whatever reason just decide to bring in Pelipper as they fake out into Farigaraf but that, that's not how that works and we just get to take our water type move there and Hyper Voice does so much damage into Pelipper even without our throat spray boost. Uh, Liquidation is gonna flat out just clap Annihilate here in the rain and Psychic Noise is going to be able to wrap up Pelipper and then with just a uh, half health no EV like Kilfairy left on the team the opponent decides to forfeit. Next up we have pretty fierce Mons, there's a lot of good offensive tools here in the Clefable who has Unaware probably but can also redirect for all the other Mons so they can get Volcarona set up pretty easily and if Volcarona gets set up it, and Rockwinded is not able to deal with it then we're going to be in a bit of a weird spot but also a Rockwinded can't really deal with Volcarona because the ability for Gastrodon to go for the Storm Drain is very menacing. So, the battle starts and I decide to lead Mian Shao and Galarian Slowbro, since I want to get Slowbro set up to maybe compete with Volcarona, and they lead two Pokemon that are weak to Slowbro, which is pretty nice, uh, as we get to free fake out here into Relu Boom, but Clefable full-on goes for the Moonblast, which I get, that's, that's a fair enough move. As Slowbro gets off the Calm Mine, and Clefable is probably unaware, but we activate our Quick Draw here, which is nice, but we don't get to KO Relu Boom, which is too bad, it lives on 1% as they get the U-turn into Farigaraf, and Clefable tried to Life do both Pokemon here so that Volcarona could take a good enough hit, and Slowbro's Quick Draw is going to activate again, but we're currently under Trick Room, so it really doesn't matter too much. And I go for the Shell Sidearm into Clefable, and since it's unaware, it gets to live, but we get the Poison on Clefable, which is at least nice. Uh, as now we're kind of racing against the clock to make the best use of our Trick Room turns. Clefable is going to redirect this next Shell Sidearm away from the Volcarona, but we do get the Hyper Voice into it, which brings it down to about 60% as Volcarona gets off its first Quiver Dance of the game, but I'm not too afraid of Rillaboom swapping back in because it's at 1% health, but also we have still a Farigaraf so they can't fake at us. Uh, Volcarona is going to take a Protect turn because it don't want, doesn't want to get attacked. And Incineroar is going to take a lot of damage from both Shell Sidearm and the Hyper Voice as they knock off into Slowbro, but... Uh, Slowbro takes it just like a champ because Slowbro is pretty tanky. And on the last turn of Trick Room, we Shell Sidearm into the Volcarona and we Hyper Voice into it. And then we do KO Incineroar, but we don't get to KO Volcarona, which is a little disappointing as now Volcarona can have much more sweeping potential. But we get to bring in a Rockwinded here, and I kind of have to make the play on what I think is going to happen because I could just use Hyper Wins with Furgraph or I can. Uh, attack with a Rockwinid, and Volcarona should probably die, disregard that current Dragon Terror they're doing, because it doesn't really matter for the HP that the Volcarona is on, but if they decide to use a Grass-type move into a Rockwinid, and then use Volcarona to KO Farigraf, I th think that they would probably wrap up the game there, but we haven't used our Terra yet, so they don't know what Terra or Rockwinid is, and there's no guarantee that the Woodhammer from Reelaboom would be able to KO into a Rockwinid. But I decided to protect a Rockwinid, hoping that they would double a Rockwinid, and that's not what we saw happen, but Furgaraf lived the higher horsepower, so Furgaraf gets to Hyper Voice and end the game there. Up next, we got a pretty wide array of just attacking Pokemon, and then they have Amoongus, probably, for their little bit of support. But I really wasn't sure quite how to address this team, I just know Mianxiao was good into a lot of what they had at the start. I decided to bring Arboliva along, just in case they decide to lead Amoongus, because we could do good damage with Arboliva, and probably use our close combat to pivot out with Mianxiao. But they decided to lead two Pokemon that were weak to Mianxiao, so I just decided to fake out into Arcanine, thinking Baxcalibur wasn't going to have an Ice-type move, but thankfully Arboliva lives the Icicle Crash and doesn't get flinched. Uh, as we get to Earth Power into Arcanine here, which takes it out, which is good, because uh, we really didn't want to have to deal with that. But now they bring in Crocodile, and they do intimidate down both Bonds, but we don't really care. As I tried to close combat into Baxcalibur in order to take it out, but the Crocodile actually goes for Snarl, which is going to activate our Eject Pack here. And we swap out into Mistrevis, just because I don't really have any use for Mistrevis at this point. As we get to drink Crocodile for a decent chunk of health here. 
Um, they decided to swap into Golden Go for whatever reason, but I just swap into a Raquanid seeing an Ice type move would probably go into that slot, and we get to get up our Trick Room with Mischievous, and now there's really nothing to stop a Raquanid, especially now that their Excalibur has teared into Fairy for whatever reason. But we taunt Excalibur this turn so that it can't protect whatever Trick Room is up, and Golden Go could have gone for a Shadow Ball into Mischievous, or it could have gone for it into a Raquanid, but a Raquanid's pretty special bulky, so without the boost, I think a Raquanid would have been fine to take it. And since the Bexcalibur decided to Glaive Rush, we could probably take whatever the Golden Go was going to throw out this turn and just click the Liquidation into the Bexcalibur in order to KO it. And since we have the Arboliva in the back, who, since we have Trick Room up, uh, Arboliva would be able to get rid of both Golden Go and probably Crocodile. And of course, we still have a full health, a 92% health actually, mind my manners, but a 92% health me and Xiao in the back for whenever the Trick Room goes off. And lastly, we have what looks to be a Shiftery Tailwind team here, but they also have some components of Parish Trap in the Politoed and the Gothitelle, which can make things kind of annoying, so we do our leads here. I decided to lead Mischievous and Mian Shao, and it's nice because both of these Pokemon have the ability to switch out because ghost types cannot be trapped and Mian Shao has the Eject Pack, so even if they did go for the Parish Trap, it would not work against these two, but they decided to go with their Talonflame Shiftry opening, and I'm kind of having to predict which Pokemon I think is holding the Cover Cloak here. Uh, they immediately swap out Politoed though, but I decided to fake out into Shiftry because I thought Shiftry would be more likely to hold the Focus Sash, and they reveal that they're actually Hurricane Talonflame, which is pretty unique tech. Uh, but Mischievous gets to get up our Trick Room, and now we get a Raquanid in for free. I decided to swap in Ferrigraph here as we Terra Water a Raquanid, and the Helping Hand Talonflame, and yeah, your Hurricane is priority, so Ferrigraph gets to negate it, as they reveal that they were actually Sash on Talonflame, so I could have just faked down into Talonflame on the first turn, but you live and learn, I guess. We a Liquidation into Politoed, and I guess that's supposed to be a resisted hit, even though it does so much in the rain. As Politoed gets get off the Parish here, but I feel pretty confident that under Trick Room we could do so much damage to what the opponent has left if it's either Gothitelle or whenever they bring back in the shift tree. And even if they did bring in Gothitelle, they can't fake out because we still have Furgraph here, so we just get to attack with both for free pretty much. So yeah, that was the Mistrevis team. Again, uh, you can see how Mistrevis took all of those attacks in order to constantly get up our Trick Room in those games, and under Trick Room it still had a lot of play because of things like the Pain Split and the Taunt for keeping Pokemon from protecting, and the will o -Wisp was nice into things that we thought might do a lot of physical damage into us, even though I think the only thing that we end up will o -Wisping was that Dragonite that was like, spamming Thunder Wave. But that's going to do it for this video, so thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked it, maybe consider leaving a like on the video, and even consider subscribing, because both of those things would help me out in absolute tonnage, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.